Okay, so the question that I'm going to answer today is this. What is my target heart rate? I think a lot of times people, they want to work out and they want to figure out a best way to work out at a certain level of intensity that's going to really benefit them. So they want to know what their, what their target heart rate is, okay? My name is Max Nazir from Fitz and Max Roswell, and I'm going to answer that question for you. All right, it's a very basic mathematic formula. Well, maybe not so basic, but if you could take out a piece of paper and pen, um, you should be all right. All right, so to get to your target heart rate, and this formula is for at 75%, okay, it's 220 minus the age, minus your resting heart rate, you're gonna multiply that times 0.75, and then you're gonna add your resting heart rate. Okay, so I'm gonna go over again. It's 220 minus your age, minus your resting heart rate, times that by 0.75, and then add your resting heart rate. The best way to get your resting heart rate is this. You can grab two fingers, and then use your right two fingers and then you're gonna measure out right here, um, right under the, the bone of the wrist, and you're gonna fill out for a pulse, and then you're gonna count for 60 seconds, and then however many beats that you hear, that's actually your resting heart rate. So you wanna make sure you do, you do this before you work out and not after, because after you work out, it's not your resting heart rate, that's more of your excited heart rate. So make sure that you're calm and that you're relaxed, and then you'll be able to use that two-finger test just like this. And you'll know it when you feel it, and that's how you determine your resting heart rate. Okay. Now remember that 0.75 that we talked about. If you want your rest, your heart rate at 80%, then you move the 0.75 and you add a 0.80. Or if you want it at 65%, you move the 0.75 and then you add the 0.65. Okay. So that's it. Take care. God bless. And remember, you can be fit. Or you can be fit to the max, spiritually, mentally, and physically strong. Okay, here's a great question from a viewer who asked this. They asked, what is the difference between weight machines and free weights? I get this question all the time and I love answering it. The difference between a free weight versus a machine, when you work on the machines, the machines, they work out a very specific muscle group in a very specific way. The machines are calibrated and orchestrated so that at certain levels of a flex that it really maximizes that um that contraction so a lot of a lot of times people use a, a machine to focus on a very particular part of a range of motion like for example a bicep curl or something like that okay so now when you're using a free weight what usually happens is you have more forces acting on that muscle as you're lifting the weight up and down because now not only do you have the actual weight but then also you have to use your supporting muscles to be able to lift that weight and then you have gravity operating at 9.8 meters per second square meaning that just a lot more force that you're going to have to work with all right so free weights are definitely a more challenging way to work out but it's probably going to get you a better result because not only are you working out that muscle in a better way but then you're also working out supporting muscles we call them synergistic muscles and they all come together and work together and it benefits you because now you're getting more muscle groups in in less time. And then last but not least, don't forget, when you're lifting weights and when you're working out, you're using your core all the time. When you're on a machine, you don't use your core as much because you don't have to stabilize because the machine has stabilized your, you know, the body for you versus if you're using free weights, you're gonna have to use your core muscles more. You're gonna have to activate it and stabilize yourself so that you'll be able to lift the weight and lift it effectively and efficiently, okay? so. That's the difference between free weights and machines. You can use both. I prefer to lean more towards free weights versus machines. All right. But, you know, it's up to you. All right. But at least you know. So take care. God bless. And remember, you can be fit or you can be fit to the max spiritually, mentally and physically strong. All right, so here's another question from one of our viewers. They asked this, why are my muscles sore after a workout? The reason why your muscles are sore after a workout is two things. Number one, lactic acid is developed while you're exercising. When you're exercising, you have that lactic acid, the residuals of that muscle building process. And that usually um, stays in your muscles to about three or four hours after you work out. Um, in the past, they thought that lactic acid was something that stayed with you for days, and um, we're finding out that that's not necessarily the case anymore. The lactic acid will go faster, but then what happens also is this, this is the second part. 
your, your muscle fibers are being torn while you're exercising. So those little muscle fibers that are really making up that big muscle, they're being worked on, they're being torn, but it's a breakdown to build up process. So while your muscles are breaking down, which is a good thing, by the way, so you need to know that because that's how you build up. It's a breakdown to build up process. Those little small muscle fibers are being broken down when you're exercising. That's the resistance. That's the challenge that you're meeting. So that way, when you're eating well and you're resting and recovering, and which is so important, you have to rest and recover, then the muscle comes back stronger and leaner. So you'll get the benefit and the transformation from being able to have that breakdown to build up process. So that's why your muscles are sore after a really good workout, all right? So if you have any more questions, feel free to send them out. Or if you want to leave a comment below, uh, feel free to do so. But in the meantime, between time, take care. God bless. And remember, you can be fit or you can be fit to the max, spiritually, mentally, and physically strong. Oh yeah, this is a really good one. This is a good one. The person asked this question. One of you was asked, how do I get rid of these flabby arms, okay? Um, some people call them flabby arms. Some people call them chicken wing arms. I mean, whatever you call them, uh, you know what I'm talking about. When your arms, when they have that little jiggle and they're not as tight as you want them to be. So I want to show, show you some different things that you can do um, that really benefit you to help you to tighten those arms and to get rid of that flabby stuff, okay? So first things first, you want to make sure that you're doing different exercises. It's going to help you to be able to tighten those arms. Uh, one of my favorite exercises are kickbacks where you take a dumbbell and you kind of extend right here and then come back. So tricep kickbacks, those are great. Matter of fact, do I have a dumbbell? You know, I'll use this one right here, okay? So you have, you have bicep curls, you have kickbacks, you have shoulder presses, all right, and then also you have chest presses, all right, and if you can do those four exercises, those are all great exercises. It's going to help you to tone your arms and get you to that next level and cutting out the fat and the flabby arms, all right? Take care. God bless. And remember, you can be fit or you can be fit to the max, spiritually, mentally, and physically strong. If you have any comments or if you need more guidance, more help, always feel free to leave your questions below. And we'll make sure that we definitely create a video so that way we'll be able to answer your question or we'll get to you directly. All right? See you later. Take care and God bless. All right, here's another question from one of our viewers. Today I'm going to answer the question, how do I... All right, today I'm going to answer this question for you. How often should I work out and lift weights? All right, great question. How often should you work out? I would say a minimum of three days a week up to about five days a week, okay? If you're just getting started and you're just getting back into the regular fitness and wellness routine, three days a week is a good amount of days to start to get going to get that blood flowing, get the muscles moving, and really start making some progress that you can see and feel, all right? And then what's gonna happen is this, you're gonna adapt, you're gonna adjust, you're gonna get stronger, you're gonna have more endurance, and you'll be able to do more. You'll be able to get more out of your body. So that's when you just push it just a little bit more and take it to that fourth day, and then eventually make it to the fifth day, okay? Exercise is a part of life, and is a good part of life because it, your exercise enhances everything. So if you can make it as, as a regular routine as possible, then it will take you so far okay but start off with about three days a week and then make sure you make it up to about five days a week okay so take care god bless and remember you can be fit you can be fit to the max spiritually mentally and physically strong if you have any other questions or any comments feel free to leave them below and we'll make sure that we answer them for you all right see you later bye bye